So here we are down in the 3D printer room, aka laundry room and furnace room. We got, uh, let's see if we'll focus there, perhaps. There we go. The, uh, the 3D printer is working on some cable chain for the project. Take a peek and see how things are going in there. And we'll to focus again. Funny. There we go. I was working on some cable chain uh, that I found on Thingiverse there and, and uh, things like this. I'm printing quite a while and printing very nicely. So let's take a peek around the uh, room here a little bit. Here's the 3D printer workstation of course and uh, oh my goodness there's a cat box. But that's not the important part. Uh, the important part is that there's a sort of an open spot here. And uh, that's where we're going to start building the uh, mostly printed CNC machine. And here we are with the workbench in place that I have so far. We've got rollers or casters on the bottom there so that it can uh, be moved around easily. And I, as, as I had mentioned before, the MDF surface here has been cut so that the waste board here in the center can be changed out easily if necessary. As, uh, was recommended on some of the, the sites. I got my shadow on there, don't I? As you can see, I've put a rim around the edge here. I'm working on the upper part of the cabinet, and I want the upper part to be able to just sit on there uh, so that we can take it off in case we need to work in the machine for some reason. We have a drawer that comes out down here so that we can uh, put the laptop and tools and things like that that we need. We'll have to be doing some wiring uh, to, to get the parts ready for this and get everything set up. And I've been working on some of the side panels for the for the upper case, the upper enclosure, to try to help uh, mitigate the noise and the dust. So it's pretty simply made. I just had some very heavy duty plexiglass in the garage. We cut to the right size and in fact the plexiglass is the only thing holding this part together. I've got some double sided sticky foam in there trying to help seal in some of the dust that might occur. But it'll be under vacuum too, of course, with this cheap little uh, shop vac we have laying around here. So, oh, there we go. And here's the conduit that I have cut, all set to go. I actually accidentally cut a fourth set of parts. I was having so much fun with the uh, conduit cutter, apparently, and lost my count. Um, I don't seem to have that handy right now. It seems to have wandered off, but I'll show you the uh, conduit cutter that I used. It's just one that I picked up at Menards, a local, a local uh, home improvement store. Um, one thing you do have to be careful of is that sometimes it will leave a sharp edge around here, and it uh, leaves a, a lip on the inside. Uh, there is a tool that they uh, show on the website, vicious1.com. Uh, that you can pick up for $25 that will help smooth those out. But um, I spent my $25 on the pipe cutter, so there we go. <laughs> I will be printing uh, some end caps in there to protect the wires from being cut, and we'll sand down any rough edges that we need to to make things fit and, and work. And this is the first part that I printed in the Raptor Series PLA. Um, I decided to change, as I said before, to uh, to the standard uh, PLA from Village Plastics here. Um, the Raptor PLA is a wonderful product. It's very strong and heat resistant, uh, although it is a little bit more flexible than um, the standard PLA, and that's part of its uh, part of its uh, uh, positive aspect because it's useful in in uh, surviving uh, impacts and that sort of thing. But uh, I don't really have the knack down 100% on printing the uh, Raptor PLA. It seems kind of hit and miss for me. Um, where I printed uh, one foot with about three tries, just making stupid mistakes, of course. Whereas with the rest of the PLA that we have here, um, there was uh, zero failures during these prints. Let me focus in on those. There we go. So the rest of the rest of the plastic parts, uh, they just prints for me. Uh, very reliably. Uh, I would do up to four parts at a time. Um, and I just wanted to show you the difference in size on some of these parts. Uh, I got about a medium sized hand. Uh, I take a large uh, uh, glove, um, uh, nitro glove at work. 
Um, I did a 200 micron level of print here. Let's see if it looks good to focus. There we go. Almost. Uh, the parts came out very nice. The designs are well thought out. That uh, They print uh, quite well without supports. There is a little bit of uh, you know, rough edge on that upper upper edges that printed like this. But it's quite a range of parts. We got these huge parts and then these surprised me how small they were. I was expecting something much bigger. Um, these little tiny, uh, uh, they're, they hold, uh, uh, effectively go on the end of the rollers, kind of hold the belt in. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to, to see how this all comes together. Sorry they're all in black, it'll be kind of hard to see, but you know, once again that's the part I, uh, material I have. Um, <clears throat> once I'm out of the plastics, uh, from uh, out of the PLA from Village Plastics, I plan to buy uh, additional regular PLA from uh, Maker Geeks and see if I can uh, buy it in a uh, larger quantity there and get one of their discounts. So, so here are some photos of the completed cabinet. Uh, the box underneath is uh, ha has the little shop vac in it. It's the uh, beginning of a baffle box. Um, it looks spacious inside, but I'm sure once we get the CNC machine in there, it'll be quite quite snug. Right. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I've got uh, a cheap uh, router running inside the box here, and uh, we still a lot of sound escaping here, where I think I'll be able to uh, make some improvements. But, you know, if you open the box, it's quite a bit longer, so we'll turn that off. So, of course, this isn't the actual uh, part that we're going to be using uh, to route on here. Um, it's a DeWalt product. This is a cheap, uh, lightweight um, Black & Decker router that I had laying around in the junk, uh, junk in the garage. So. We'll try it again when we have the actual part. But I just wanted to do uh, kind of an example for the noise level and how I'm trying to uh, abate it here. I downloaded a cheap decibel meter on the iPhone just to get a feeling for where I was at uh, with the doors open and the doors closed on the cabinet. And you might want to pause the video here and take a look at uh, where I was at on some of these. Um, but uh, the last one down in the lower right uh, shows with the doors closed and upstairs in the in the living room area where the family wasn't sure that I uh, hadn't turned it off. So that's a good sign. Uh, I still plan to keep working on it so that it's a little bit more uh, tolerable when you're in the room uh, with the machine. We'll leave it there for now and I'll continue working on the top. Hope you join me for this project. It's going to be a learning experience for me. So you get to see some of the mistakes that I make and, and some of the things that I do right. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, certainly share and support and like. And I appreciate it.